Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I was in the weeds the other day. The weeds meaning I was in the comments section looking at what people write in the comments section. And um, and one one video or one short that got a lot of attention was the video you did, Alex, about gold not being an investment. Um, for the audience out there, I understand this is called the passive money plan. Passive money meaning ways to derive income from investments. Alex eloquently put it in the video that gold does not produce an income. So that is not deemed an investment. And one thing that people get misconstrued, everybody talk about, oh, you got to invest in gold. You know, when times get hard, that's the way that people go back to is gold. That's possibly true. But gold itself is a hedge against deflationary currency. Uh, one thing that people don't understand, the value of gold never changes. The value of gold never changes. What changes is the depreciation and the buying power of fiat currency. So the reason why gold 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago was worth, you know, $600 an ounce, $500 an ounce is because the value of the dollar was stronger. Now, today, the value of the dollar has depreciated more, and then the cost of gold is $2,300 an ounce. But the value of gold is still the same. If you had, uh, let's say, 16 or 32 ounces of gold, and then you wanted just to buy one pound of gold, you could still can do it. But cost-wise, against the fiat currency, it costs more now than it did in previous years because the value of the dollar has depreciated substantially. So when you're buying gold, you're hedging against fiat currency. You're not buying it to say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a millionaire for gold unless you just buy a crap ton of gold now and you just foresee that the fiat currency will depreciate to oblivion. And then next thing you know, you like uh, Venezuela or a country like that, that their currency has depreciated 99%. So in Venezuelan currency terms, you are quote unquote a millionaire because you have gold. But on this channel, when we talk about investments, we talk about something that's going to either produ produce you an income via dividends, via cash secure puts, via covered calls, real estate, anything that will bring you in an income. And then it's easy to tell if it's an investment. I mean, if it's an investment or it brings you an income is how you're taxed. If you buy a stock that don't pay dividends and you sell a stock, is you will pay capital gains tax. But if you buy a stock, a blue chip stock that produces a dividend, a dividend king or a dividend aristocrat, the dividends that's paid, you're charged at your income rate. If you you know make that much money, you'll be charged at your income rate over the 15% threshold. So that's what we talk about when we talk about investment. Now, I know it's gold bugs, gold bulls out there. There's nothing wrong with that. I actually have gold, physical gold in my, you know, in my possession. But I don't sit there and look at gold and say, oh, I'm selling. If I sell this gold, then I'll have twenty three hundred dollars. That just letting me know that. Let me say it another way. I have the gold to hedge against the deflation of the U.S. currency. The reason why the value of that gold goes up or the cost of that gold goes up rather is because the value of the dollar has less buying power than it had years ago when I bought it. Now, if you just look historically uh, inflation adjusted over the last hundred years, the cost of gold has went up exactly and this adjust, uh, inflation adjusted has went up a total of 425 percent over the last 115 years, 110 years. If you look at gold, if you bought gold in 2008 at $2,000, and then if you look at the price of gold now, it's at $2,300, it's only went up 4.5% in the last 10 years. So for all you investment proficionados out there, it's always in the comment section. If you held gold for the past 10 years, you only appreciated 4.3%. Total, not annual increase, total increase in the past 10 years. So is that really an investment? It's not putting cash in your pocket. Now there is ways to invest in gold 
or gold derivatives to put cash in your pocket, i.e. gold miners, gold ETFs, that produces a dividend. Uh, you could go buy a gold mine and have people mine the gold. Now that's a way to produce income from gold. And then somebody in the comment section was, is oil an investment? Oil itself, physical oil, just sit in barrels in your house. You won't even have enough room in your house to hold this oil. But it's derivatives that you can get income from, like explorers, like oil producers, gas producers, the Exxon Mobiles, the VPs of the world. Those are investments, but the physical commodity itself is not. I mean, Warren Buffett said it best. It doesn't produce anything. If you wonder why Warren Buffett is not a big fan of cryptocurrency, because it doesn't produce anything. So that's so understand what an investment, especially when we're talking about on this channel, because bills are due every month, every week, every month, every quarter. Excuse me. You need to have an investment that will produce you income to satisfy those bills. You can't go to the electric company and say, oh, well, I got this investment in gold. Just just cancel out my electricity bill. You need something that's going to give you cash because that's what the world's ran on. That's going to produce you cash to pay those bills. And the more assets you have that produces income will satisfy the bill that you don't have to work a nine to five job to be able to meet those obligations. Alex, sorry, I went on a tangent, but those comments and comments section sometimes get to me. <laughs> no, it's all good. Yeah, that was my point. I mean, I think you explained it really well, um, especially the one that was, you know, going back and forth with you. And then he mentioned is oil and, and investment. I think that's the perfect way to just think about it because I think people think gold is a investment more so because it's attractive because you right. can take gold and you can take oil. They're both physical things. They're physical objects. The investment from them is like you said, if you invest in oil companies, if you have oil rigs, if you have oil manufacturing that's producing you an income, that is an investment. But just to buy crude oil and have barrels of oil sitting in your house is essentially the same thing as having gold bars. Now, obviously gold bars is, are maybe easier to sell, but gold itself, like you said, it's just a hedge against, you know, against inflation. It's a hedge against the dollar. Now it's the same thing. Maybe, yeah, you can convert the oil into needing it for your vehicles, but like, it's just like, it's an essential thing, but it's not like it sitting there is an actual investment. My point, like, like we've talked about, like an investment should do three things, give you tax benefits, appreciate in value and produce an income. It should do all of those things. And the argument too, is if it doesn't do all of those things, it could, you could say, like we've talked about a house being an investment, a house that you live in, because a house goes up in value, a house, you know, has tax benefits, but it doesn't produce you an income. That's essentially the same thing as well. People, I think they view investments wrong. Now, obviously it's because they're taught that way, but in a true investment produces that income because if an investment only, if an, if the only requirements to be an investment was to appreciate in value and give you tax benefits, then almost everything would be an investment, but that's not the case. And my point in the video was to show people, look into what real investments are so that you can change your life to better your life because cash flow producing investments are what are are what's going to give you the ability to retire they're what's going to give you the ability to be self-sustainable not something that just maybe holds value or appreciates in value over time and if you have cash flow producing assets you're in a much better spot because like i said back to retirement you need cash flow in retirement unless you just are sitting on millions and millions of dollars but and then your comment with uh i was laughing i was like man whose side is he on he was when you commented on the guy that said uh obviously this guy missed out on the bitcoin pool crash <laughs> and Kirby was like yeah great comment I was like hey wait a minute <laughs> oh shoot but that that was funny but um but I mean, even in then, it's like how many people actually cashed out enough Bitcoin to retire? Not many. So it's like, you know, maybe even if they've got six figures in profits, like it's still not enough to retire. You have to invest in assets that produce cash flow to retire. 
Yeah, and then most of these the people that made money on Bitcoin, they blew all the money trying to be social media famous. And then now they're sitting here waiting for ne the next run to try to, you know, get their situation back. The thing is, is they don't have, when you, only thing you can do is buy and sell and you can't get a return off of it. I know people are going to go in the weeds in the comments and say, oh, well, you can, you can stake your crypto and all that. Yeah, you, you can. I mean, hopefully you don't have another F FTX or whatever that company was and they went scamming. There is ways to make it an income producer. There is ways to do that. But just sitting there holding asset that doesn't produce you nothing, does you nothing in the longer form of dealing with your day-to-day, month-to-month, week-to-week obligations. So on this channel, we want to focus on the thing that is prevalent in everybody's life. What's prevalent in everybody's life is bills are due. We're trying to find a way so you can meet your bill obligation without having to work a nine-to-five job. There's nothing wrong with working a nine-to-five job. But your life is so much better when you have the option to work or not work. When you can have investments that's paying your monthly, uh, weekly obligations as far as bills and stuff going, as far as grocery bills, light bills, house payments, carp notes, and things like that. And the money that you work for is free and clear for you to do whatever you want to do. You, Most people that just sit here holding gold or buying gold is just hoping one day that it will go up big enough so one day that they can sell it and then maybe they can pay off their house but in the meantime what they hoping they still gotta go grind listen to bosses that they don't like work long hours that they don't like to do just to meet those month-to-month -month obligations and that is the thing that we're trying to cure so that means said though guys if you have any comments let us know down below don't forget to like this video share this video subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one